Welcome Thank to New Day, UPCI you. North Thank Miami. So good to have you with us today via live stream. We look forward to the day when you can be worshiping with us in person, but we are delighted to have you with us today remotely. We are so thankful for what God is doing. God is here in this house. God can be in your living room. We would encourage you to stand, to worship, to clap, to sing along. We have seen many exciting reports during this time period of where people are showing up on doorsteps, calling, saying, I want to be baptized, scheduling baptisms. Saw recently where a lady received the infilling of the Holy Ghost sitting in the living room on her daughter's couch. There are so many exciting things about what God is doing. Last week, I challenged you to be captains of 10, to be captains of 10. And I would remind you that Moses and David both made captains of thousands, captains of hundreds, captains of fifties, and captains of 10. And I would challenge you during this time to be a captain of 10. Find 10 people that you can get to watch church service with you. Find 10 people that you can teach a home Bible study to. And it doesn't have to be in person. It can be over FaceTime. It can be uh, through group in. It can be all sorts of ways through technology. But be a captain of 10. Find 10 people during this period of isolation to reach out to. Think of the widow lady down the street. Go knock on her door and stand six feet away from her front door and visit with her. Talk to her through the glass. Visit with her. We saw pictures of our newest member here at church. Her aunt was standing outside the plate glass window looking at her niece through the window. She was there to visit her niece in safety, using wisdom, and I commend her for that. That is wise, but there are ways that you can touch people. You can impact people's lives. You can point them towards Jesus Christ because he is the answer, and you can use wisdom in doing so. Let's continue to worship in song.
how great is our God. Oh, you're great, you're wonderful, Lord, you're mighty. You are a magnificent God. You are great. You are worthy. You are mighty and worthy, Lord, to be praised and lifted up. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We can praise you. Hallelujah. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer at this time. We have many needs. We need to pray for our nation. God will heal our land. That God will heal our land. We need to pray for our nation. We need to pray for peace of mind, healing in bodies. We need to pray for those that are sick. We need to pray for those who have inadvertently infected others so that they are now dealing with the guilt and the anguish of having infected others. We need to pray for their peace of mind. We need to pray against this spirit of fear that is gripping our nation because fear is not of God. Fear is not as God. We're going to go to the Lord and pray. There are various individuals that I know that are struggling with sickness. A couple are dealing with COVID, not locally, but globally. And then there are a number of individuals locally that are dealing with sickness totally unrelated to COVID. But let's go to the Lord in prayer at this time. Lord, in Jesus' name, God, we come boldly before the throne of grace, God. You were wounded for our transgressions. You were bruised for our iniquities. Tast chasmin of our pieces upon you, and by your stripes we are healed, God. God, you are the healer, Lord. God, in your word, you sent your word and healed them, God. There were many times you sent your word and healed them, God. Lord, while we are unable to pray for people in person today, Lord, you know you have the way to heal, God. Lord, we pray for Brother Eli Hernandez, God. Lord, we pray for the church in Illinois, God, where their whole church is infected, God. We pray for healing in their church, Lord. God, we pray, God, that you would bless, that you would strengthen, that you would touch, that you would uplift, God. Lord, we rejoice in you, God, for you are the answer. God, we rebuke the spirit of fear. God, we speak peace to hearts and minds and spirits. God, for you are the peace speaker, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Had numerous people reach out to me, textbook, phone call, wanting to know how to pay their tithes and offerings. You can mail your tithes and offerings to P.O. Box 320, North Miami, Oklahoma, 74358. P.O. Box 320, North Miami, Oklahoma, 74358. There is also a link on the church Facebook page where you can pay through PayPal. And we do know that that is working because a number of our church members have contributed that way. So if you would prefer to do it through PayPal or if you would prefer to write a check and mail it, you can do that. Um, But I would encourage each of one of you who would like further instructions to call me or message me, I will be happy to provide you more details on that. We thank you for your continued support, for your love for your local congregation, because we do appreciate what God is doing in our midst. We are continuing to try to minister outside the four walls of this church. We are supporting individuals. Um, I mentioned in earlier service, Sister Linda Bennett, is having great revival in her care facility where she uh, is ministering on a weekly basis. The power of God is moving in. They are having great services, and, and we rejoice with her, and we rejoice with each one of you as God is doing great and powerful and wonderful things. Continue to worship with us in song.
worship you. Come on, raise your hands. I worship you. Thank you for each and every one of you that has decided to worship with us today. We will be back here tomorrow evening at 7 o'clock doing our Exploring God's Word, our next lesson in Exploring God's Word. Um, it will be limited attendance as it has been. Uh, it will be myself and the tech crew and maybe a couple of other people, but we would encourage you to participate online to study along. We will be moving into the next lesson as we work through exploring God's Word. We will be having live stream service again Wednesday night and then again next Sunday. Stay tuned. We are in discussions about possibly having a youth service sometime this week, um, either through Facebook Live or some other technological means but we are working to pull that together. So we are excited about what God is doing. There are lots of opportunities, and I would encourage you to be a captain of 10, to find 10 people that you can influence, whether that be online, whether that be through your cell phone, whatever, but be a captain of 10. I would encourage you to do that. Pray that our land will be healed so that we can come back together corporately as a body. Uh, however, I do think it's important that we abide by the instructions of our civil government and we do need to try to cooperate them with them as much as is possible. Um, God is a healer. He is a miracle worker. He also gave us good sense. He gave us a brain and he expects us to use it. And I would encourage you to wash your hands, maintain your distance, do what's appropriate to help prevent the further spread of, of COVID. So thankful for what God is doing. We would worship in one with one more song as our speaker is preparing to come, but we're going to worship once again in song as we go before the throne. There's the truth older than
there's a kingdom that forever reigns. There's a freedom from the chains that bind us. Jesus, Jesus, who walks on the waters, who speaks to the sea, who stands. I often tell the church, doesn't matter what your question is, Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the answer. Whether it's physical, whether it's emotional, whether it's spiritual, whether it's financial, doesn't matter what the issue is, Jesus is the answer. Thank you, singers. Thank you, musicians. We are excited about what God is doing in the kingdom. I have shared some reports about Sister Bennett and others about people responding, reaching out, saying they want to be baptized as soon as we can arrange it. We're excited about that, um, about what God is doing. We're excited about the lives that are being impacted and being touched, but we know that God is in control. God can do all things, and we know that he is doing great and wonderful things. Carol Campbell is coming to deliver the word to us at this time. He is a young man who I have come to respect and admire. I know he has a close walk with God. He is a man. The Bible says we hold this treasure in earthen vessels. We all have faults and shortcomings. We hold God's eternal truth in this carnal nature of ours. He is a man like any other. The apostle, when he prayed for someone and they miraculously were healed, they fell down and began to worship him. And he said, whoa, hold it. I am a man like as you are. We are all human. But inside of this young man rests the spirit of the almighty God. 
And he is an anointed man of God to bring the word to the church today. And I am excited about the word that he brings. And I hope that it is going to impact your life as I know it will if we will open our ears and our hearts and our minds and our spirits. Lord, in the precious name of Jesus, God, I pray you would bless Brother Carol Campbell, God, as he comes to deliver the word, God, that you would minister in his life, God, that you would uplift him, that you would strengthen him, God, Lord, that you would give him wisdom and direction in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Stevenson, for those kind words. I appreciate that. Thank you, New Day, New Day United Pentecostal Church, for having us here today. We're so thankful for an opportunity to bring the word to you today. Um, this is, uh, I, I can't say that I've given my life to, to preaching or speaking in, in front of people. Uh, I, haven't, I haven't done that, but it is a passion of mine from time to time, that there's something that I just got to get out. I just got to get it out. And so I got I to gotta get it said. And so today, today we're going to try to do that here. Thank you for this chance. I know it's, uh, it is a fearful and nervous time when a pastor hands a microphone off to someone else to let them stand behind the pulpit in the place where he pastors. I understand that. I appreciate I, I appreciate that. I know what it means for the pastor to let you speak to his congregation, and we appreciate that. Amen? Amen. 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 How much time do I have left? No, I'm just playing. <laughs> I'm just playing. <laughs> All right. All right, we're going to get into the Word today, though. Uh, we're going to have a good time. I, I, um, I spend some time in the Word, and uh, sometimes something just hits me from a different angle. And uh, maybe maybe this will be familiar to you, maybe not. Uh, if it is, that's fine. If it's not, that's fine too. Just take your time. Take some notes. Amen. Take some notes. I would encourage you to, uh, to not, not go check the roast in the crock pot. That roast is going to be there. Amen. Unless there's smoke coming out of the oven, stay with us for, give me half an hour. Stay with me for half an hour. Okay. Give or take, evangelistically speaking. Amen. Amen. We're going to start this morning, this afternoon now. We're going to start this afternoon in Genesis 1. Genesis 1. Uh, we're going to start at verse 26. We're going to read verse 26 and 27. God said, let us make man in our image. After our likeness, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air. And over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Amen. You can be seated. Oh, before you do, pray with me. Pray with me one more time before we're seated. Dear God, I pray today, Lord, that you would just move. God, that your word would fall today on broken and hearts on fallow ground, Lord, that it would take root, that it would grow, Lord, that we would put your word, as David said, I hid my word in your heart, God, so I won't sin against you. Today, Lord Jesus, I pray, God, as we minister today, Lord Jesus, that your words, God, would find a place to grow in someone's life in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. Amen. So God said, let us make man in our own image. And God made man in his image, in his own likeness. And what does that mean? So what, what then is the image of God? What then is the image of God? Is this the image of God? Amen. Brother, Brother Stevenson got... In my business earlier this morning, talking about putting too many donuts in the body. Amen. Right? He got in my business a little bit. He's supposed to. He's a pastor. That's what he's here for. Amen. But is this the image of God? Is this what God looks like, more or less? Is he, is he a, a humanoid type figure? Does he have hands? Does he have feet? Does he have eyes? Does he have a face? Like you and I have a face. Is that, is that what it means to be the image of God? Oh my goodness, there's this girl that goes to our church. 
Holy cow, she is gorgeous. She, if that is the image of God, I could look at that for eons and eons. Just, oh, dark curly hair, few freckles over her nose and cheeks, just green hazel eyes. Oh my, well, you guys saw her. It was my wife. She was playing the keyboard here a few minutes ago. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Is that the image of God? The Bible says male and female were created in his image. That's what he says, right? We look through the Bible and we find out what the Bible says about God. In Exodus 3, God appeared to Moses as a burning bush. In Exodus 13, he appeared as a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night to lead the Israelites and, to, uh, at, and give them light at night and to shade them from the heat in the, in the desert during the day. Right. Is the image of God a pillar of cloud and fire? In Matthew chapter 3, we find the Spirit of God descending like a dove right. and lighting upon Jesus. Right. Is the image of God a bird? Hmm. In Matthew and Mark and Luke, we find that Jesus was the stone that the builders rejected. Right. And now he's become this chief sword. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, the Bible says that whoever will fall on this stone and is broken will be saved. Right. But whoever this stone falls on will be ground. It will grind them. Right. Right. Amen. Hey, you just need to be. You just need to be aware of which side of the stone you might be on this morning. All right? So it, more than once, actually, in the Bible, more times than that, we find Jesus referred to as a rock, as a stone. The Bible says in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10 that they drank of the spiritual rock that followed them. That rock was Christ. So now we have several images or ideas of God being a rock in our land. And there's many more. You just read your Bible. They're in there. I'm not making any of this up. I'm not that smart. I just, what, what's in the Bible is what I, I just bring it out, okay? I'm not that smart. Then we find in John, John the Baptist said, Behold, the Lamb of God. The Lamb of God. So now, now we've gone from a burning bush to a dove to a rock to a lamb. Right. Oh, my goodness. In Revelation, we find he's the lion of the tribe of Judah. Now he's a lion. What is, what is this image that I am made in his likeness? Right. What image is that? Go a little bit further in Revelation. We find he's the bright and morning star. Right. So, so many, so many Images that are, are mentioned about what God is to us, for us, through us, because of us. What is the image of God? What is his image? Earlier I asked, is, is this God's image? The image of a man, a face, two arms, two hands, two feet. Let me tell you something. There's a million monkeys running around that looks pretty similar to us. All right, I'm not going to say that. I almost, I didn't say this. I almost said there's a bunch of us running around acting like monkeys too, but I'm not saying that. I almost said it, but I held back. Okay, so I didn't say that, but you know who you are. Amen. Amen. Almost everywhere you look in nature, animals that God created before he created man have two eyes, a nose, a mouth, a couple of ears, four limbs, birds have wings, fish have fins. There's few animals in nature that don't have those or they got an abundance. Spiders are creepy because they got more than four legs, right? right? They're just creepy. Yeah, got more than four. Than, they got like eight or ten eyes or however many eyes they got. It's crazy. I like one for each leg or something. But they weren't made in the image of God. The Bible says I was. The Bible says you were. So what does that mean? He repeated it again in Genesis 5 and chapter, uh, verse 1. He says, this is the book of the generations of Adam. In that day, God created man. 
In the likeness of God made he him. Try to think about that. What really does that mean to me to be made in God's image? What really does that mean to me? All manner of four-footed beasts are made similar to what I am. I've, uh, I'm a hunter, and I've taken apart more than one animal, and they, you just do them all the same way. You just do them all the same way, because they're so built so much alike. So I got wondering about this. What is this image? And you know, image means more than one thing. Image can mean a photograph, it can mean a statue, it can mean a, a physical reproduction like that, but it can mean something else. It can mean my reputation, right? right? It, can mean, it can mean the, the persona right. that I portray to those around me, whether, whether real or imagined, whether truth or facade, it could be that hey, you've heard it, you've heard the phrase, I can't do that, I got an image to uphold, right? right. right? My wife and I were talking the other day. I was like, man, this thing's got to get over pretty quick. I need to get a haircut. I need to get a haircut. If I don't get a haircut pretty soon, I'm going to have to start wearing a man bun, wearing flip-flops, and drinking frappes or whatever. I can't do that. I got an image to maintain. I got an image to uphold. I can't wear, I can't wear flip-flops down to the coffee shop. Come on. Some of you can. If you can, I'm not. do what you need to do. Right? I can't. I, I just can't do it. But I got, a, I got a reputation to maintain. Do you know, do you know, do you realize that you, I, am God's reputation to this world? Come on, preach that. Preach that. I am God's reputation to this world. I am God's image in this world. Right? Philippians 2 and 7 said, Jesus made himself of no reputation, but took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Wait, wh- wh- hold on. No, that's what it says. He was made in the likeness of men. Wait a minute. I was made in the image of God. I was made in the likeness of God. Now God's being made in the likeness of men? That doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense. You don't make a copy of a copy. You get static. You get off. Any of you, uh, any of you carpenters out there, you know what I'm talking about. You can, you can cut a piece of wood, right? You cut a piece of wood, and then you can use that piece of wood, and you don't have to measure out either one. You can put that there and make, make your mark and make your mark. But if you, if you mess up and throw your original away, and then you get a copy of it. And then maybe you get another. And you make a copy of a copy. And eventually your copy doesn't match the original. Because it's off base. Why would God, why would God make a copy of himself and then make a copy of that copy? Hmm. Man. This is really what got all this started. Right here. This one verse got all this started. I read that and I was like, that is, this doesn't even make sense. It doesn't even make sense. But Colossians 1.15 tells us that Jesus is the image of the invisible God. He's the firstborn of every creature. See, if you read your Bible, and I know some of you do, if you don't, you should start. I'm going to just say this. This ain't in my notes, but I'm going to say this for free right now. All right? If the only time you get Bible and Bible words is when you're in church, you are way, way off. You have to know this word for yourself. Paul told, Paul told the Christians, follow me as, I'm, as I follow Christ. If you don't know your Bible, how do you know that your, your pastor is preaching what is in the Bible? You need to know it for you. That's free. That's free. It's no charge today for that little tidbit. Know your Bible. It's going to be more important. Anyway, in John 4, 24, 
John 4, 24 says, God is a spirit. God is a spirit. They that worship him, worship him in spirit and in truth. Does a spirit have hands? Does a spirit have feet? Does he what? You know what? That's why, okay, bottom line, that's why Jesus came to earth. God needed hands. He needed feet. He made himself a body to come to the earth. All right? God is a spirit. This is, this is a problem. Okay, so this is a problem that a lot of uh, people who, who teach Trinity, this, this is where they, I believe this is where they miss it. Okay? Is because, because, Because 2 Corinthians tells us, or 1 Corinthians 2 tells us, which things we also speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but with the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. See, because the Bible says God, the Bible mentions the Father, the Bible mentions Jesus, the Bible mentions the Holy Ghost, they go, well, there's got to be three of them, okay? Well, let me tell you something, God is a spirit. God's a spirit. Not, not a physical body like this, okay? So I can, be, I can be a father to my son. I can be a son to my father. I can be an uncle to my nephews. I can be a friend to my friends. I can be a friend to my enemies. Right. Oh, you could do that too. Think about that for a minute. But here's the problem is I can't be all of those to all of those people at the same time, okay? God being a spirit, can be the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, all at the same time. As a matter of fact, if you read your Bible very far, if you get, I know some of you do, if you get into your Bible, you'll find in Luke, right, that the Holy Ghost overshadowed Mary she conceived. That makes the Holy Ghost the Father. I'm just saying. All right? Because the Holy Ghost is God's Spirit. God's Spirit overshadowed Mary she conceived. All right, it's, it's not that hard. But it's there. See, Colossians 2 and 8 tells us to beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men and after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. We have to compare the spiritual things to the spiritual things. And I think a lot of times people get messed up because Father, Son, Holy Ghost, well, there's three different ones they got to be three and they're, they're not they're all the same you read your bible spirit of god spirit of christ the holy spirit the spirit holy ghost all of those those terms are all interchangeable in your bible they're all interchangeable just read it it's there i'm not making it up amen so then what is god what what then is the image of god what is god like if he's not a body like this what is he well, it's a good thing we have a Bible to tell us that. The Bible tells us what God is and who God is. And he tells us who God is to us and what he is to us. Amen? Amen. Pay attention. Here's where you want to take some notes. Psalm 99 and 9. Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his holy hill. For the Lord our God is holy. Number one thing we need to know, God is holy. He is holy. That's why, that's why we have to change our lives to meet him. Because he, he's a holy God. He can't abide sin. He doesn't like sin. And now I hear people sometimes say God hates whatever group of people. And I'm going to tell you, God doesn't hate any group of people. God hates sin. Okay? And then we think, we think to ourselves that this sin is worse than that sin. And I can prove it to you very easy. You say, oh, we don't think that. Sin is sin. God, God believes sin is sin. We believe sins are by degrees. Or else you wouldn't get a year for robbery, four years for armed robbery, and 20 years for murder. Okay? We, we are the ones who decide what degree of sin is. God says sin is sin, but he's, he is holy. 
God is a holy God. And in order to be in communion with him, I have to live a holy life. Okay? You have to live a holy life. All right? Psalm 115 and, or 116 and 5 tells us this. Gracious is the Lord. Oh, man, our world could use a little more graciousness these days. I know, I know a lot of you guys are watching us via Facebook, watching us via uh, YouTube and all of that. And I'm fine with that. That's great. God, Jesus used every medium he had to reach people, which was basically just walking around talking to people at that time. That's what they did. Okay. But Jesus used every, he reached out to every people in every way he could. But I think there's, there's something about this digital age where people can hide behind their computers and hide behind the anonymity of that and say mean things to each other and not, and not, not feel like there are consequences to that. God is gracious. If I'm going to be like God, if I'm made in his image, I also need to be gracious. God is righteous. He said, God is great, the Lord, gracious is the Lord, and righteous, righteous. Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing about being righteous. That already got ruined for me. I got messed up a lot. I got messed up a long time ago. Right? We'll get into it a little bit more. But here's the thing. He imputes his righteousness to me. When I give my life to him, then his righteousness becomes my righteousness. Okay? So... That's a freebie. Wow. That's a freebie. Righteousness. And our God is merciful. Uh, could we not use a little more mercy in the church? Could we not use a little more mercy in the church? I, I see it, somebody comes to, to God, they, they come to the Lord, they come out of whatever they came out of, right? And maybe the pastor sees something in them, maybe he just feels something and he like says, you know what, I need you to do this. And then 13 people are sitting in the back going, you know what? If that's you, if you just came out of something and, and the pastor has decided that that you need some work to do, because if you just came out of something, you need some work to do, right? And you find out that people, whatever. Let me tell you something right now. Let me tell you something. It is not your business what other people think about you. That's none of your business, all right? Here's, here's what you need to worry about. What does God think about me? What does God think about me? All right? It, you can look around and you can say, I'm not as good a Christian as that guy because he does whatever. Or you can look over here and you can say, I'm a better Christian than that guy because they do whatever. And let me tell you something. There's only one mirror to look in to decide where your life is as far as a Christian, and that's right here. How does your life line up with this book right here? If your life is lined up and in alignment with the Bible, then you don't worry about the next guy or the other guy. You worry about you and where you are with God. All right? And if you're one of the ones in the bag, let me say, God is merciful. And if I'm going to be like God, I have to be merciful. Right? Here's another freebie. This is just for free. The Bible says that Satan is the accuser of the brethren. So if you're putting a mean mouth on your brother or sister, you are doing the work of the devil. That's, a free, I'm, that's just a free one. We're not charging for that one today. God is merciful. Ephesians 2, 14 says, He is our peace. He is our peace. Who hath broken down the middle wall of, of, of partition between us. With all the craziness going on around us today, couldn't the world use a little more peace as well? As a Christian... As a man being made in the image of God, it is my job to spread peace. It is my job to spread peace. Now, now, Paul understood how difficult this could be. 
Paul understand that. In Romans 12, I believe it is, he says, As much as you can, as much as lieth within you, live peaceably with all men. And so he knew at times it was going to be a struggle. Some of you may have struggled with that on your way home from the grocery store this morning. Some of you may have had to honk and wave at someone who cut you off in traffic. And I'm hoping if you're waving, you're using all your fingers. That's all I'm saying. People, I, that's why I don't put a Jesus sticker on my car. I had no Jesus stickers on my car. If I had to cut somebody off in traffic, I don't want to be mad at Christians in general. <laughs> Just be mad at me today. Right? But live peaceably with all men. Spread peace. There's a lot of conversations going on. This, this crazy virus has got everybody talking about all the time. Spread peace. It's going to be okay. We've survived, we've survived that and worse. It's going to be okay. God has it in control. It's going to be okay. God's a healer. Amen. God's a provider. God is a changer of circumstances. Amen. It's going to be okay. Amen. Peace. And then here's one. This might be, this might be the hard. If I'm made in God's image, this might be the hardest one for me to, to deal with. I'm going to read it, and you guys are going to go, oh, that is so easy. But it's not. It's not. Here we go. You guys ready? 1 John 4.16. We have known and believed the love that God had to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. I want to say how easy it is to just love everybody. It is not easy to just love everybody. You have to wake up. and you, You know what? My wife and I have been married 31 years. That's a long, it's it's quite a while. It's not the longest people have survived, I mean, uh, been married. It's not the longest people have been married, but it's a long time. How do we do it? I don't know how she does it. But I know every morning when I wake up, I decide that is my wife. Today, I love her no matter what. Okay? God looks at you every day. And he says, I don't care how crazy, how weird, how bad bad those people think they are, I love you today with all of my heart. As a Christian, it can be very difficult for me to feel that same love for everyone around me. It can, I told you, it sounds easy, but it's not. It's not. You have to wake up every day and decide, you know what? I want to love those I meet today like God loves those I meet. I don't want to see, I don't want to look at the world and see somebody who needs a shower and their clothes washed and a haircut. I want to look at the world and see somebody who God loves and needs the Holy Ghost. That's what I want to look at the world to see, and it is difficult at times, to look at everybody, especially if they just took your parking spot at the Walmart. (laughs) My goodness, you just had a donut. Walk the extra 20 feet. Hey, man, we get, we get, it's so easy for us to get angry at those around us. And it's so hard for us just to love those around us. But it ain't your fault. It ain't your fault. Can't help it. Can't help it. How do I know that? Well, I don't make stuff up. I find it in the Bible. 
Find it in the Bible. He says in Colossians 1, let's start at verse 19. Colossians 1, 19. It pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. Now, we already covered that. I can go back through it if you need me to. Okay? But I, right now, just know, God's Spirit rested fully on Jesus Christ. All right? Okay. It pleased the Father in him should all the fullness dwell. And having made peace, through the, oh, making peace again, through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him, I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. Now listen to this. And you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled. He reconciled. What does that mean? What does that even mean? Anybody in here ever reconciled a checkbook? Right? It just means bring it back to even. Look at what's going on. Look at what's outstanding. Make sure it matches up. God has reconciled the world back to himself. He is bringing what was outstanding back, taking account of it to bring us back to even to where we started in him. In the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. See, he knew he knew that I was at enemy, I was at enemy with him in my mind. Right. And my mind, my mind was an, was an enemy with God until I allowed him to bring myself, bring me back to even with him. Why is that? Why, why are we like that? Why can't we just wake up every morning? We were made in the image of God. Why can't we just wake up every morning and just be like God? Right? Isn't that what Christian means? The word Christian means like Christ. Right? But David, David understood why. David understood why. He wrote in the Psalms 5, or 51 and 5. He said, Behold, I was shapen in iniquity. In sin did my mother conceive me. You were born that way. Why is it so hard to love everybody around you? You were born that way. Why is it so hard to create peace with everybody around you? You were born that way. Why is it so hard to not show mercy to your brother and sister? Or to show, why is it so hard to show mercy to your brother and sisters? Because you were born that way. Hmm. But that's not an excuse. That's not an excuse. Because even though I was born out of balance with God, after having been created in his image, I was born out of balance with him. Jesus Christ came, gave his life, died on the cross so that I could be brought back into balance with God. So that now I can be again in the image of God. David later on, he said, I was born in sin. I was shaping in iniquity. But a few verses down, he said this, create in me a clean heart, O God. He did, he did not say, God, clean my heart up to be like you. He said, make a new heart in me. Renew a right spirit within me. Create something different. In my life from where I am. Because I am out of balance. So we find in 2 Corinthians 5.19. That God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. Not imputing their trespasses unto them. And it committed unto the word of reconciliation. If I could have music again. God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses. Do you understand what that means? Do you you have a grasp of what that is? That God brings you back to even with him and then whatever happened in the past is in the past. And he's not going to hold that against you. Okay, so let me back up just a minute. I was talking about somebody who just came, whatever, just came in to the church and pastor uses them and we whisper and 
whatever. Okay? God's not holding their trespasses against them. Why would you? Why would I? Why would I? So, I had a friend. He's a young young man. He's a preacher. Learning to be a preacher. Wanting to preach. And he said, Carol, I just, I just can't stand in front of a crowd and talk to all those people. I said, you, do, you, don't, you don't have to talk to all those people. You find one person in that crowd that you like or you think likes you, and you talk to one person. Today, listen to me. I'm ta- you're the one person I'm talking to. You are it. Wherever you are, wherever you are, wh- whatever you're doing right now, stop for just a second. Look dead in my eyes because to this time, I am talking to you. You are my one person. Okay? You are it. Colossians 3.10 says, Put you on the new man, which is renewed in the knowledge after the image of him that created him. You were made in the image of God. You were made to be holy, righteous, gracious, merciful. Amen. Peaceful, loving. That's what you were made to be. That's what you were created for. We got out of balance. Sin came into the world, and we got out of balance. But today, God has reconciled or can reconcile your life back to Him. He says, Ephesians 4.23 says this, Be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that you put on the new man which after God is created in righteousness and holiness. Stand with me today. At at some point at some point in basic Christian teaching at some point in basic theology teaching People started being taught that being made in the image of God means that God looks like us. That God looks like us. That God uh, is basically a person, got a head, got hands. Probably, Probably don't have, you know, as much of this as I have. But that's not really... That's not really what it was about. We were created to be holy. We were created to be righteous. We were created to be loving. We were created to be merciful. We were created to be gracious. That's what you were created to do. That is the image that God made you in when He made you in His image. Today, Today you may be at odds with that image. You may be out of balance. God is here right now to reconcile your life back to Him. God is here right now to bring you back into balance with what you were created to be. You may well be a person who says, you know what, I've given my life completely to God. And I I do believe that I live righteously and I live holy. And I live in love and I live in mercy and peace. And if you are, if that's you, then show someone else how to do that. Take some time to disciple someone else and show them how to live like that. When someone comes around and they want to whisper or whatever, just say, you know what, that's not, that's not, that's not what God wants. That's not what God wants from us. God wants us to extend a hand of mercy to those. God wants us to show them the same love that we expect from Him. Amen. These, this is the book of the generations of Adam. In the day that God created man, in the likeness of God, made He Him. You were made in the image of God. You were made in the image of God. 
Amen. However distorted that image became, why don't you take some time right now? Why don't you take some time right now and say, God, create in me. Pray what David prayed. If that's all you, if that's the only prayer you know, pray what David prayed. Create in me a clean heart, oh God. Renew in me a right spirit. Just take a minute right now where you are and, and say, God, I need you to reconcile my life back to you. God, reconcile my heart back to your heart. Renew my mind, O oh God, after the image of him that created me. Renew my mind, O oh God. Jesus, today, God, we know you've come to put our lives back together. Lord, we know that you've come, Lord, to, to bring us back into balance with the Creator. Lord, to bring our hearts back into balance with you, Lord Jesus. Uh, God, I pray right now, Lord, that you would just move throughout this people, Lord, throughout our, our, our city today, God, throughout the country, wherever people are today, Lord. I pray, God, that we would determine in our hearts today, Lord, to allow you, God, to reconcile, to bring us back to even. God, to bring us back to you, Lord, to live after your reputation, God, to be the re your reputation on earth, Lord, that each a person who comes into contact with us, Lord, would know, surely in that man, surely in that woman, surely in that child dwells the Spirit of God, surely in that person dwells the love of God. Lord, I pray today, Lord, that you would just wash over us today. Let your holy anointing today, God, just fill our houses, God. Fill our places, wherever we worship today, God. That your holy anointing would fill, would overwhelm our souls today, God. Lord, that your power would be apparent today in our lives, wherever we stand. God, we pray for healing, for peace, for restoration today. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you this morning for allowing me to join you here at New Day. Amen. If you need prayer, if you need, if you need a personal prayer, if you need a personal prayer today, and you want to reach out to New Day United Pentecostal Church via Facebook, just send in through Messenger, however you can reach out. Someone will call you, return a, a call, call you, will pray with you personally on the phone if you, were, if you need that. Whatever New Day can do for you, during this time, Lord, just know, just know that your church is here. That your church is here. Amen. As apostolics, you know church is not some place we go. Church is something we do. It's something we do. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Amen. Continue to pray. Continue to worship as they sing. Continue to pour your heart out to God. Let God touch you and let Him bring you back to Him and renew you in His image. I need your grace. I need your mercy. I need your grace. I need your hand. Thank you for joining us at New Day. Thank you for...
being with us. Join us again tomorrow night at 7. Scripture says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. I would urge you to remember scriptural teachings. Think on good things. Think on positive things. During this time of fear and torment, do not allow the enemy to gain a foothold. But God is good. He is gracious. He has blessed us abundantly. Lord bless you. We will see you tomorrow night.